you said not to kill. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you should be vegetarian? In order to kill, there has to be five things happen. There has to be a living being. You have to have the intention to kill. You need a weapon. You use the weapon. The being dies. Now, you walk into the grocery store, and there's some meat sitting there in the package. Do you have intention to kill? Yes. First, is, is that being alive? No. You don't have intention to kill. You have intention to put food into your stomach so that you can continue on. Because food equals energy. Okay? So, the, it's not alive. You don't have the intention to kill. You're not taking a weapon and using it, and you're not causing that death. You can say uh, you're caught. I know what you're going to say. From time immemorial, people have been eating meat. By my eating meat, it's not going to stop beings from being killed. Just because you have a body, there's 80 different beings that die every day because you have a physical body. Can you stop that from happening? Like bacteria and stuff? All of them. Inside and out. That's why the Buddha said you need to work to get off the wheel of samsara. Then you don't have to do this anymore. But it all comes down to intention. It all comes down to intention. You can be walking along and an ant scurries right underneath your foot just as you're putting your foot down. Did you intend to kill that being? No, you didn't intend to. But that being died. There's no wrong be wrongdoing if there's not the intention to have it happen. I would argue that I'm supposed to kill because if I'm in the store to buy meat, I'm reinforcing those who kill me. Okay. And, and you go to the store and you buy vegetables, are you reinforcing the people that are killing oh, the... Oh, yeah. So um, the but how about the bugs on them? It is the same thing. They're being killed. They're being killed for the food that you have to have, that you're putting in your body. You can't live without that happening. Honestly. is to kill it. Yes. Okay, I had a pig. My intention was not to have that pig killed. <laughs> My intention was to keep that pig around because he was a good pet and he was a good friend. And when I had to leave and I gave him away, I made sure that he went to somebody that wasn't going to kill it. And that's all I can do. But they might have given him to somebody else that did kill it. But my intention was not to harm that pig. And I eat pig. But I didn't, I didn't want that one harmed because my intention was to keep that pig alive. Well, what you, what you wind up doing when you say, oh, I'm a vegetarian, it's just like somebody comes up and slaps you really hard in the face. 
How dare you do something like that? They're going out of their way to be do something nice and share with you. And you turn that gift into something that is not good. No, don't do that. Unless you're not able to eat meat because you're not used to eat or something. Let me tell you what the Buddha said about this. This is called the Jivaka Sutta. Just as I heard on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the mangrove grove of Jivaka. Jivaka was the Buddha's uh, doctor. He attended to him all the time. Then Jivaka went to the Blessed One after paying homage to him. He sat down at one side and said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, I have heard this. They slaughter living beings for the recluse Gotama. The recluse Gotama knowingly eats meat prepared for him from animals killed for his sake. Venerable Sir, do those who speak thus say what has been said by the Blessed One or not misrepresented him with what is contrary to fact? Do they explain in accordance with the Dhamma in such a way that nothing which provides a ground for censure can be legitimately deduced from their assertions. Jivaka, those who speak thus do not say what has been said by me, but misrepresent me with what is untrue and contrary to fact. Jivaka, I say that there are three instances in which meat should not be eaten. When it is seen, being killed, when it is heard, hearing the animal die, or suspected that the living being has been slaughtered for oneself. If I go to a restaurant and somebody gives me lobster, I know that they killed that lobster for me. I can't eat it. Okay, these are, these are the rules for the monks, too. I say that meat should not be eaten in these three instances. I say that there are three instances in which meat may be eaten. When it is not seen, being killed. When it is not heard, being killed. When it is not suspected that the living being has been slaughtered for oneself. Going to a store and getting meat that it, that's an allowable thing. It's already been. It's not slaughtered for me. It's slaughtered for somebody else. It's no, no, no. Saying me particularly. It's not killed for me personally. Here, Jivaka, some monk lives in dependence upon a certain village or town. He abides pervading one quarter with his mind imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, and around, and everywhere. And to all as to himself. He abides pervading all-encompassing the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. Then a householder or householder's son comes to him and invites him for the next day's meal. The monk accepts if he likes. When the night is ended in the morning, he dresses and taking his bowl and his outer robe, goes to the house of that householder or householder's son and sits down on a seat made ready. When a householder or householder's son serves him with good alms food, he does not think how good that the householder or householder's son serves me with good alms food. If only a householder or householder's son might serve me with such good alms food in the future. He does not think thus. He eats that alms food without 
being tied to it, infatuated with it, and utterly committed to it. Seeing that the danger in it and understanding the escape from it. What do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such occasion choose for one's own affliction or for another's affliction or for the affliction of both? No, venerable sir, does that monk sustain himself with blameless food on that occasion? You see, it didn't say whether it was meat or not. It doesn't matter whether it's meat or not. It matters what the monk is doing with his mind at that time. And he's using that food to give his body energy so and keep his mind alert so that he can practice meditation and get off the wheel. That's the whole point of food. You have to have food in your system. There are beings that die when food is raised. It doesn't matter whether it's a big being or a little being, they're still beings. But it comes down to the intention. I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma abides in loving kindness. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that, for the Blessed One abides in loving kindness. Jivaka, any lust, any hate, any delusion whereby ill will might arise have been abandoned by the Tathagata, cut off at the root, made like a palm stump, done away with, so that they no longer are no longer subject to future arising. If what you said referred to that, then I allow it to you. Venerable Sir, what I said refers pre precisely to that. Here, Jivaka, a monk lives in dependence upon certain village or town. He abides pervading loving kindness and compassion. Imbued with equanimity, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. Then a householder or householder's son comes to him and invites him for the next day's meal. The monk accepts if he likes. What do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such occasion choose for his own affliction or for another's affliction or the, for the affliction of both? Do you understand what that means? He's just accepting a meal. I lived in a Theravada country. They are not vegetarian. I could not be a vegetarian and live there without offending people. I had to accept whatever they gave me. And uh, some, of the, some of the stuff was very hard to eat, but I ate it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone slaughters a living being for the Tathagata or his disciple, he lays up much demerit in five instances. When he says, go and fetch that living being, this is the first instance in which he lays up much demerit. When that living being experiences pain and grief on being led along with a neck halter, this is the second instance in which he lays up much demerit. When he says, go and slaughter that living being, this is the third instance in which he lays up much demerit. When that living being experiences pain and grief on being slaughtered, that is the fourth instance in which he lays up much demerit. When he provides the Tathagatha or his disciple with food that is not permissible, that is the fifth instance in which he lays up much demerit. 
anyone who slaughters a living being for the Tathagata or his disciple lays up much demerit in these five instances. Yes. And because I depend on what other people give to me, I have to eat what they give. But if I suspect that they killed that being directly for me, then I won't eat it. I'll go hungry that day. If I see a, a being being killed, I hear them being killed, or I suspect that the being is killed specifically for me, I won't eat it. But the Buddha ate me. He did okay. <laughs> so it comes back to Adam. Yes. You know, that in the in the Bible it says something about uh, it's more important what comes out of your mouth than what goes into it. <laughs> and that's really true. That's really true. I've heard, I've seen more people be completely offensive that are vegetarians than people that eat meat. Because they they put demands on everybody around them. Oh, I I'm vegan. I don't eat this or this or this, even though other vegetarians do. I'm more pure than that. Look at the pride that's in them. Are they really helping themselves by doing that? And when they go to a friend's house, how much do they offend that friend by not eating what? prepared for them with love. I had when I was a layman I had a girlfriend that she was she not only was very much a vegetarian, but it had to be prepared by somebody that put a quote a lot of energy into the food. And I saw her get upset stomach and throw up because quote the food wasn't prepared the way she thought it should be. Now, that's ridiculous to make yourself so oversensitive that one meal, one way or the other, it doesn't really matter whether you eat meat or not. But the, the, whole, the whole thing with to be vegetarian or not be vegetarian, to be quite honest, I like vegetarian food. There's nothing wrong with it. 